In this part one of SSL in WebLogic Server 12C, we will learn some basic concepts of SSL. So what is SSL? SSL is called Secure Sockets Layer. So what does it mean? That whatever the communication that you are doing on any network, it is secure. Okay, so when that your message is reaching from your source to destination, it should be secured when it is in transit on your network. So how we can make a network secure? Let us learn more about that one. Suppose that a user trying to access the website of a bank, okay, from the browser, okay, and whenever the user hit the website address on the browser, okay, it reach to that particular bank server. Right? Because if suppose that you are trying to access XYZ bank.com server, okay, from your browser, okay, then the request will reach to the server of XYZ bank, ser bank server from the public network, right? That means from the internet. So you are accessing the website with the help of browser from your home. And when the page is displayed in front of you, or maybe when you logged in and then whatever the transactions or the uh, you are doing on the website, okay, that connected with the server of that particular bank, okay, or particular vendor. And whenever the data that you are uh, uh, transferring, okay, from your browser to your server, okay, it is going through the public network or can say over the internet. So that means the data is passed between your browser and the server of the company all the time. For example, when you log into the xyzbank.com, you enter your username and password. So you enter your username and password from the browser, but when you click on submit button, it reach to the server of XYZ bank, and then it authenticate the username and password, okay? And then it send the response back. So that means the data is flowing from in both direction. That means from your browser to the server, and then from server to back to your browser, right? So when data is transferring from your browser to the server of the bank, okay, that means in that case, the data of whenever it transferring from the public network or from the internet, it should be encrypted. In same way, when your server is sending the response back to your browser, it should be encrypted. So this is the functioning of the SSL or, the, or you can say about the secure socket layer where your data is completely encrypted when it is moving on on the public network or you can say on the internet in the both directions. So secure socket layer is a protocol for securing communication on the internet. So SSL is a kind of a protocol. So protocol is a certain kind of a standards that has been followed by the different technologies or hardware. So okay, that is a set of called as, as a protocol. So SSL is defined as a protocol which is used for securing communication on the internet or you can say on the public network. Okay, and then SSL use encryption algorithms to scramble data in transit, preventing hackers from reading private information as it is sent over the connection. So what does it mean when we, when we are saying that data is getting encrypted when it is transferring over the public network, that means that you need a certain kind of a programs or algorithms or keys, okay, which can encrypt your data. And again, when it is reaching your destination, there has to be some way to again decrypt that data. Okay, so it is only encrypted when it is transferring on the public network, but when it is on the source on when it is on the destination, it has to be in the readable form. Okay, so this is the work of your SSL, which where different kind of algorithms are used for the encryption and decryption. So this information could be anything sensitive or personal, which can include credit card numbers and other financial information, names and address. So information could be because maybe you are accessing the website of a particular bank Maybe you are accessing the website of an e-commerce portal or you are, where you are doing certain kind of transactions, you are purchasing certain things there. You have your username and password, you have your shopping cart, you have your order details, and then you are purchasing certain kind of orders and then where you are doing a certain kind of a payment transaction. So you access the website, e-commerce website from your browser, but all the transactions is happened from the server of that particular organization, company. Okay, so that means when your username and password or any kind of a data that is flowing between your browser to the end server from the public network, okay, from the internet, it has to be encrypted. And this is the work of SSL. It encrypt the data when it is transferred over the public internet. So no one can or no one no one can attack in between to to uh, to steal your data, right? So now 
the technology that is behind this encryption is called a public key cryptography and it uses a asymmetric cryptography okay so there are two kind of uh, cryptography are there are symmetric and asymmetric okay so here when we, when we talk about the ssl it uses the asymmetric cryptography so what does it mean okay that means it use public and private a key pair that means it uses a public and private key so instead of using a certain kind of a username and password kind of a method mechanism so okay it use a pair of public and private key for the encryption and decryption of data that means when the data is transferring from your browser to the server side okay then there is something or some keys required which can encrypt the data and but when you are it reaching to destination server there has to be a certain other key which can again decrypt your data and then when it is sending the response back to your browser it again encrypt your data and when it reach to your browser there has to be certain kind of a key which can again decrypt your data so data is transferring in both direction and data is getting encrypted and decrypted in both direction okay so for that one there has to be certain kind of a keys and that key is called public and private key so one what happen is that you can see in the picture there is a sender and there is a recipient okay so sender is sending a plain text data and then there is a public key right in between this public key is encrypting your data it is converting it is in cipher data okay and then it is when it is reaching to a recipient okay that and and that and you have a private key that private key decrypt your data so when we are talking about our example okay so sender is your browser and then recipient is your xyz bank server okay so your data is transferring from your browser to xyz bank server and then again from xyz bank server to your browser and in between the data is getting encrypted and decrypted at both end with the help of public key and private key so private key as it is names suggested it is a private key so it should be on the server of the particular organization bank bank or maybe uh, if it is an e-commerce organization then the private key should be on the server of the e-commerce organization and when we talk about the public key it should be on the your browser side so in next advanced session we will see how this public key and private key pair work how the data is is get transferred how the public key and then this you are uh, private key are shared between your sender and recipients and how this complete algorithm work for the encryption that we'll see in the some advanced lecture okay in the next uh, next couple of days so data encrypted with the public key can only be decrypted with the corresponding private key and data encrypted with the private key can only be decrypted with the corresponding public key so what does it mean there is a corresponding private key for each public key and for each private key there is there, there could be a corresponding public key okay this is a one to one mapping it's not like you have a multiple private keys and multiple public keys so any public key can encrypt the data of any private key or any private key can encrypt the data of any public key so any data which is encrypted with the help of a private key it has to be decrypted with the help of corresponding public key and in same way if any data is encrypted with the help of a public key it has to be decrypted with the help of certain corresponding private key so private key you all you, you always you have to keep it safe okay and public key which is specifically designed for the public it has to be on the public key uh, public side or you can say it is on the browser so when your data is get transferred from your browser so with the help of public key it is encrypted and when it reach to the destination then again it is decrypted with the help of your private key and then when the response is getting back to the browser then again that private key decrypt that data and when it is reached to the browser then again your public key decrypt that data to make it in a readable form right so public key and private key are not real keys okay not really keys that we have in our daily life own life okay and then but rather than are really large prime numbers that are mathematically related to one another so that means it is a certain kind of a algorithm that has been designed by certain kind of a security developer so i'm sure you heard about rsa and dsa or when you have uh, worked on ssl or even you have not worked on ssl maybe you have somewhere on the on on the security part you must have heard about rsa dsa and ecc and ecdsa okay these are the certain kind of algorithms that has been designed by the certain security developers okay and then it it, it these are the certain kind of a code which take that plain text as an input and then encrypt that text in some unreadable form okay and then apart from the public key and private key concept okay public private key pair concept okay the another important part in the ssl communication is about certificates okay in in certificate there are certain major terms that is called certificate authority server root and intermediate certificates are also called the digital certificates and then these certificates make 
or why it is required, the certificates are required for identity and trust. So what does it mean? Suppose that you are trying to access the website of xyzbank.com from your browser, okay? And then, as I said, the request will reach to your server, which is the XYZ Bank server. But how would you know that, that the website that you're trying to access, it is that particular intended website that you wanted to connect, okay? The, the, the website of xyzbank.com. You can, and then we are in the digital world, okay? And there are a lot of things happening in, in the internet, right? So there could be possibility that someone can hack the DNS Okay, and then the your request will divert it to the servers of the hacker, which is trying to be pretending to be like the xyzbank.com. So that means when you try to access a website, okay, there has to be a certain mechanism which can create the trust, which can create the identity so that your system or your browser or your communication or whatever you are doing, it should ensure that you are connecting with the intended server, not with the, some hackers or some other kind of a servers. Those are trying to steal your data, okay? So for that, you have to have, you have to be a certain kind of a mechanism that is called identity and trust in SSA, okay? So once you have configured your public and private key with the help of, with uh, including your, uh, with your identity and trust, okay? In that case, your SSL communication get completed, okay? And for identity, you have a private key, and then digital certificate. And when we talk about the trust, for that you have a trust CA certificates. The certificate authorities are certain kind of a standard authorities across the world. They, they issue the certain kind of a SSL certificates. Okay, there's also called the digital certificates and that include your server certificate, your root certificate and your intermediate certificates. So there would be only one server certificate, one root certificate, but the intermediate certificate could be multiple. So that we will see in our uh, next lecture, uh, how we can configure the server root and intermediate certificate and what exactly the concept of server root and intermediate certificate and how they are interrelated. But when we talk about the SSL communication, for that you have to ensure your system identity and trust. And for identity, you have your private key and digital certificate. And for trust, again, you have a trusted CS certificates. That is again a digital kind of certificate certificates, but we call them as a trusted CS certificates. Okay. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for the next video.